words for Mike of God's love for him and for Aaron, his daughter. That what we have here is words expressing God's love for Mike and Aaron, his daughter. All I said, all I'll say in regards to that is, uh, there's been some trouble times, all right. And uh, likable kid, kid. Can I call her a kid? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> okay. What is she? Twenty what? Uh, Twenty four. Okay. And uh, yep. And we love her. God loves her. Mike loves her. And on it goes. Okay. Wow. Anything else? We can wait for this. Heirs by promise. When this started, I had no expectation of where it went. And I was a little surprised at where it went. So you hang with me and we will proceed. Uh, Today we're going to set out to establish that we really are heirs of promise. That's the foundation, the promise uh, of the gifts offered to us and to all men. Titus 3.11 says this, and you won't see it up there. I'll take time. Bill, can you put Titus 3.11 up there, please? For you that has got a set of notes, if they're blue, they're not on the screen. 211? Oh, 211. Thank you, Dan. You got it straight? Change your notes. I thought I checked them every once in a while. 211. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to who? All men. You mean all men? All men. All. Simple as that. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. So they are without excuse, Romans says. And in Romans 12.3, it also says, the last portion of 12.3, God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Where did that faith come from? Jesus, whose faith did he give? Ah, and where did it come from? Him? Guess what? He gives what he is, and what he has. And that is going to be the crux of the study today, that you receive what he gives, and he gives himself. Okay? Keep that in mind. So our beginning, we choose grace, salvation, faith. We choose as gifts given by promise. All right? In Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, I had the voice, I left Bill a note to change this to a red, so it's here. For by grace, grace are you saved. All right? Through what? Through faith. So we're already talking about grace, and we're talking about faith. And what, is, what does he say about that? Grace, saved, faith, what is it? It's not of yourselves. Got it? Cool. It is what? It is the gift of God. Do you just pick one of those as a gift of God? No, I don't see how you can do that. So the gift of God is Grace? Is grace a gift? Is salvation a gift? Ah, is faith a gift? Yeah, it is. You say, can you prove it? By the word of God. He just said it, but we can prove it elsewhere. And we'll hit some of those as we go through this morning. So, 
For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The results, the results of this, we are joined one spirit with the Lord. One. One. Not two. One. Amen. You're created in righteousness and true holiness. <laughs> yeah. Don't deny it. Don't back up from it. I am created by God through Jesus Christ in righteousness and true holiness. Of God's righteousness and true holiness. Uh, you got a note there. You can go look it up. Grace took our sin and gave us God's righteousness. It is the divine exchange by promise. Hmm. So righteous children are no longer under a schoolmaster called the law, the law of works. God gave righteousness by promise of the divine gift, Jesus the Christ. Is Jesus a gift? Yes, he is. Was it your choice he came? God's choice he came. Came to who? All men. Let's take, Bill, will you give us 2 Corinthians 5, 19, I think. Let's take a look at this verse. To wit, that God was in Christ Jesus doing what? Reconciling the world unto himself. Wow. Wow. Not imputing their trespasses unto them? <laughs> How powerful that becomes. And that's committed unto us the word of reconciliation. It's our job to tell the world that Jesus Christ forgave their sin. Done. It's already done. You say, I don't have to go through a lot. You, by grace are you saved through faith. That's not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Doesn't sound very complicated, does it? Well, it's not that simple, I've been told, sort of. I can only believe what the Word says. Right? I'm not going to... Don't, don't, don't try to take away from it. Add to it. Remove it. Do those things. No. That's not what we're looking for. Wow. Galatians 3.18 says, for, for if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise. God gave the inheritance, my words, to Abraham by promise. Is that true? And he gave those inheritance to Abraham by promise, I think it was 430 years before the law. Okay? Amazing, isn't it? Receiving by law and receiving by promises are opposites. Law involves effort, works. Promise provides as a gift grace. We are either saved by works or by grace, but not by a combination of the two. Oh, really? Romans 11.6, let's see what it says. For if by grace, then there's no more of works. Is that what it says? Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be by works, then there's no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Does that take care of it? Wow. Wow. Paul repeatedly stressed that faith is the only requirement on our part, and that is a gift. We've already heard this morning. Still, an abundance of religious people today cannot accept the fact that we, are, we have to do is believe to receive God's promises. We've got to work. Hello? Bill, let's try Ephesians. I think it's 2.10. Let's try it. 
If not, Dan will get us straight. I've been told, because when I say things like this, they say, well, we have to work. <laughs> Don't get to work out of place. Okay? Don't get to work out of, yes, you will do something. Because, look at this one. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. But good works don't get us in. Grace, salvation, and faith, gifts of God get us in. My wife might be able to remember. I, I, she'll probably remember clearer than me. I, although I don't know because he was dealing with me about things that are very noteworthy to me. At 24, that was a lot of years ago, kneeling at an altar, I didn't know up from down, sideways from crooked about spiritual things. And I wonder, how in the world do I have what it takes to get saved? And I was anything but a saintly person. <laughs> okay? Just fact. I told somebody the other day, they didn't expect me to live to 21. Like, nobody could live like I lived and make it to 21. Shall I go on public record? 82 the other day. <laughs> Okay, now hang on. So at an altar, did I have, did I know anything about grace? Did I know anything about salvation? Did I know anything about faith? Basically, no. How'd you get in, Lynn? I accepted his gift. Because he kept wooing me to himself. There's all kinds of things that happened that were not normal. I had, the only radio, I had the only radio in Muskegon, Michigan that got 24 hours, seven day a week gospel programming every time I turned it on. I may be the only one in town recognized when, when planes left the airport and flew over my house that I thought they was coming in. Sitting in a hole a rainy morning between two Two, four-lane, whatever that main road through Muskegon is, down in the hollow in the water with all air leaving all four tires and right side up and whole and hearty. You see, when God moves, he'll take us from where we are to where he wants us to be. Now, isn't that exciting? And it, Today, we're talking about heirs of promise. Wow. Wow. Mm. In Romans 5, 1 and 2, it says this. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace. Did you see what it took to open the door to grace? Faith. What is it? Where did it come from? <laughs> I tell you, can you see? We're heirs by promise. Oh, it's so simple. Wow. We have peace from God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand, established and permanent. We rejoice, praise, and testify in hope expectation, trust, and confidence in security with a guarantee of the glory of the nature and acts of God and self-manifestation, what he essentially is, does, of the character and ways of Christ to and through believers of God. Wow. Whew. 1 Peter 1, 19 through 21. I'll start with verse 18. You don't have it, but it's I'll take two words out of it. It's the testimony there it says, I'm redeemed. Verse 19 starts with this. Redeemed with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. 
Our Heavenly Father examined Jesus and found Jesus without blemish and accepted His blood instead of ours for the atonement of our sin. Do we all realize that the Old Testament priest, when you brought a lamb or brought a sacrifice, the priests examined that? When they found it perfect, you were dismissed, <laughs> so to speak, and they made the sacrifice in your behalf. You, you, God examined the sacrifice, Jesus, in our behalf hmm, and gave us promises that Jesus fulfilled. I tell you, how, how can we miss this? Exciting, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus, for being my substitute. Verse 20 who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. See, he had this in place before you were. Yep. It was manifest in these last and final times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him from the dead, gave him glory, again, vines, the way of Christ to and through believers, that your faith and hope, experience, expectation, trust, confidence, security, guarantee, might be in God. It is through Jesus, <laughs> the author and finisher of our faith. Remember that? That's Hebrews 12, 2. The author and finisher of our faith, that we believe in God. So here we go now. The justified believer is a son in the family of God. Not a servant under the law, Galatians 3, 21 through 25. Is the law then against the promises of God? Paul says, God forbid. If there had been a law which could have given life, did you get that? If there was a law that could have given life, did the law give life? Gave death. Because nobody could live the law except one. Yours and mine substitute Jesus Christ. All right? The Son of God, the Son of Man. For verily righteousness should have been then by the law, if, if the law could have given life. The law came and made sin alive. Hold it right here. Back up. Ten minutes ago. Whatever it was. Remember I said, Abraham... I don't mean to exclude you. Remember Abraham? I said, we said Abraham was righteous before God 430 years before the law. Got it? Romans reports on it. Amazing, amazing, isn't it? Just absolutely amazing. I lost my place. Okay, the wages of sin is death. All right, now, verse 22 of, of Galatians 3. The scripture has concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. The promise of who? Jesus Christ. If you've got pencil, write down Galatians 2.20, write down uh, and 2.16. States it three times in those two verses. All right, but before, are you ready now? Before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up. I'm not talking about no voice. Confined, shut up without a means of escape unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Do we understand the law locked you up because faith was not available? Is that what it says? For faith came. Then when did faith come? The faith as we know, faith came with Jesus Christ. We were kept under the law, shut up unto faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Isn't that simple?
One, two, three. You there? I told you I'd be back. Here I come. All right. All right. Uh, we were kept under the law, shut up, shut up without a means of escape unto faith which should afterwards be revealed. Do, do we realize that the Old Testament saints that offered those sacrifices had to wait for Jesus to come, die, be buried, and when he raised, who did he take with him? He took the Old Testament saints that, that believed on him. Uh, Hebrews 9.15, uh, one verse, we'll just include it here. Faith which afterwards should be revealed. It was, they were locked up. <laughs> here is the release. Isn't it exciting what the word does? You know, it, it's exciting. For this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgression that were under the First Testament or the Old Testament. All right? They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. They went down, they went to Abraham's bosom and waited for Jesus to preach the gospel to them. Give them the promise. Then they followed him out of there. Ah, I, think, I think you'll find that in Ephesians 2. Oh, wherefore the law, verse 24, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Let me insert Romans 3.28. Therefore we conclude, a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. That's English. Simple and direct. Go on to verse 25 of Galatians 3. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster, a term applied to the Mosaic law as dealing with men as in a state of mere childhood and tutelage. The promise by faith of Jesus Christ is available today for all the world. So therefore, choose Jesus. Amen. Some have substituted the law of works, turning away from the faith of Jesus Christ. The Galatians did this, some of them, and received Paul's very stern, blunt, and direct words. In Galatians 3, 1 through 5, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ has evidently set forth crucified among you. The benefit of the crucified Christ now today is the full blessings of Jesus' atoning death is now available. Jesus paid it all. <laughs> yeah. Paul is also saying that the Galatians' actions defied logic. They had to be demonic deception involved to turn from the grace of Christ to legalism. The Living Bible says this, What magician has hypnotized you and cast an evil spell upon you? Okay. This only will I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, that you are now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain without a cause, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministered to you the Spirit, worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? All legalism is focused on the external, the sensual, not focused on the inner man, spiritual. Legalism isn't only, can I say this word? Isn't only dumb, it's sensual. Sensual means going only by feelings of what is perceived with the five senses. Hebrews 5, 11 through 14 is where you find a reference to this. It tells us that to have our senses exercised to discern good and evil, what that takes is the meat of the word. Milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness and for babes. 
Wow. If we be Christ, then are we heirs according to the promise. Amen. Galatians 3, 26 through 29. For ye are all children of God by faith in. Faith in. A fixed position at rest in Christ Jesus. For you... I'll, I'll just share this. By now, ever, most people but some may not. You see that little word in down there? You, 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 I don't know how much attention you pay, for it, pay to it when you read it. Most of the time in the Greek or the New Testament, in is the word in, en. And what is that? What's the definition of that word? It is a fixed position in time and place at rest. Should we read it that way? For ye are all the children of God by faith in a fixed position, time now, born again, place in Christ at rest in Jesus Christ. Now, how do you like that? Does that define you? Ooh, well, there's a destination then. There's a, something that is available. Amazing, isn't it? Just amazing what a little word will do. Wow. All right, we come out from under the authority and control of the law. We now have liberty, privileges, and right as full-grown children, heirs, children of God, sons of God, joint heirs with Christ, adult children, or on our way to being adults, or growing up to be better adults, or more complete adults. For as many of you has been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Whoa. When I believe in Jesus Christ, grace, salvation, and faith covered me with Jesus and his righteousness. Christ is the Son of God. Therefore, to be clothed with Christ means we are covered with his sonship. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. May I go astray for a moment? In marriage there is a difference. Enough said. <laughs> Through union with Jesus Christ, we have all been made one. We are one new man, the body of Christ, joined together by faith in Jesus Christ. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Remember how that fits. Abraham believed and he was counted righteous before the law. We are of the seed following that. Yeah. You're heirs of Abraham, heirs of Christ. If you be Christ, you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Amen. Jesus had no need to be justified through faith. Therefore, as our representative, the promise was made to him. And since, and since we are in him, we receive the benefits. Join heirs. Jesus, with whom we are join heirs, is also now our mediator between us and the Father. Oh, sounds like a good benefit for us, doesn't it? Amen. We are beneficiaries of his goodness, not ours. As Christ, we are heirs according to the promise. Joint heirs confirmed. Romans 8, 15 through 17, For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We are sons of God by adoption, we are sons of God by birth. Jesus was a son of God by nature. Jesus said to the Jews, we were our, uh, to the Jews, he said, they were, we were of our father the devil. But Jesus purchased us and adopted us as sons of God. Isn't that cool? We, he took us right out of darkness and put us in his light. 
Amen. Amen. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God. 1 John 5.10 says, He that believeth on the Son hath the witness in himself. 1 John 5.13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. No question. You know. When the time comes, <laughs> you already got eternal life. You're just passing into a different scene. It's all. Nothing to be feared. Nothing to shake you. A, perhaps an expectation. Think so? I think so. Okay. Oh, the spirit. Okay, where are we at? Uh, <laughs> so a spirit bears witness with our spirit is to assure us that we are the children of God. Verse 17 of Romans 8. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, we may also be glorified together. I, have you ever wondered how come we're joint heirs with Christ? I, huh? I think it's, I think it's a, I don't know if you've ever seen a checking account that takes two signatures. You may have seen them. They're, okay. The first Adam signed off with his own signature, so to speak. We're being joint heirs, takes two signatures, and we're not, if we make the mistake, the second signature will never reach the check, so to speak. Okay? Yet, I look at it from the other side. If I'm a joint heir, I inherit with him. I inherit on his scale. Ugh. Lynn, you just took a big bite there, didn't you? Mm. So today, in the for some of you, have you ever thought of words you can't spell and can hardly pronounce? <laughs> Marla, you got those notes right there. Can you give? Will you say that word out loud? Where where it says the call. So the promise of being here. Culmination. Okay, I thought the word, I had to look it up, and now I find it difficult for me to pronounce. So, the culmination of the promise of being heirs. Now hang on, because that, I want you to really get this, because we are going to conclude with this. Wow. Here we go. We are looking at John 16. 12 through 15. The setting is, Jesus says, it's necessary that I go away that the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, will come. He will reprove the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. We hit verse 12, and this is what he says. I have yet, now he's talking to his disciples, his people. At this point, I have yet many, because he hadn't gone away, and the Holy Spirit hadn't come. To live inside. Acts 1 had, 2 hadn't happened yet. Okay? I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. I trust that this morning we can all bear the following words. Oh, amen. So be it. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, wow. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show, announce and declare, the Amplified Bible says, you things to come. Now, it's been happening here this morning. In this instance, Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. Jesus had spoken of the ministry of the Holy Spirit many times before, but here he reveals that the Holy Spirit will show us things to come. For knowledge is one of the distinct characteristics of God alone. One of the most miraculous and beneficial ministries of the Holy Spirit. Also, maybe one of the most least used. All right? Now, Jesus speaks of the Holy Spirit. 
and what his ministry is to these people and to you and I today. He, the Holy Spirit, shall glorify me, Jesus. For he, the Holy Spirit, shall receive of mine. Is that? He will, he shall show. Amplified Bible takes that word, says reveal, declare, disclose, and transmit it. What it? The all truth and the things that are mine to you. Now, did you get that? Begin to, begin to feature that. The Holy Spirit shall receive a mine. What's Jesus? He will show, reveal, declare, disclose, and transmit it. What? All truth and the all things mine unto you. Are you set? Now he sets out to clarify, Jesus wants to clarify where he got all things from. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he, the Holy Spirit, shall take of mine, mine, all things that the Father had, as and show, reveal, declare, disclose, transmit it, all truth, and the things of mine unto you. Did, did we all grasp that? Are you short of anything needed in the spiritual kingdom? Huh? Can I learn more? Yes, but the guide to all truth is with you. Well, I need something else. Is, did Jesus attain it for you? Then it's yours. Avail yourself of it. You say, how do I know it's mine? Voila. He told you. <laughs> I give it to you. You receive your heirs by promise. Oh, amazing, amazing truth. Just amazing. You are joint heirs by promise of all things with Jesus. I, anybody excited? <laughs> Father, may we receive. May we look at it as you look at it in our behalf. May we receive from you as you direct us, as the Spirit of God reveals truth. May we step into it, so to speak, or may we just receive it as you intended. Without, without clouds, without doubts and fears, without, without, with, without hesitation and firm assurance and confidence that I understand, that we understand the voice of the Spirit of God and what He's directing us to do and to be, what is ours. May we step forward and receive from you. May we just love, honor, and adore you and dwell in, as heirs by promise. That's the message this morning. Amen. Amen.